absolute hosiery, y'all. Oh my gosh. Stop. We're fishing dangle. I'm on a lake about 30 minutes, well, about an hour from the other one I went to. So I used to live down in this area, and what I've noticed over the years is that the water temperature is usually about 5 to even 10 degrees cooler, or warmer, I'm sorry, than North Texas. Same thing with East Texas. The water temperature, it's pretty much just North Texas. If you live in North Texas, you're about a month behind what Central and East Texas bass are doing. My mouth's been healing up a little bit too, guys. I feel better. I'm still on the milkshakes and all that squishy food, but I feel better, which is good. So my goal today is to try to find some good grass. Uh, I've got an upcoming trip with a, uh, a young man that has a brain tumor. My goal for this week is to try to fish a bunch of different lakes, make content for you guys, and also find some fish for this guy so we can go have a good time. The lake I'm at today is mostly surrounded by reeds. And there's a power plant on it. I haven't been here in, in a year or two, but uh, the water temperature is 54. So I don't know if they're really running uh, the power through it. If you guys watch this channel, you know I look for two birds a lot, little black ducks. They're dabbling ducks, so they dive down and they try to eat the little micro vertebrae inside of the grass, so you know that there's grass in there. And another fantastical tool is to use uh, the side imaging. And instead of like having to rip a rattle trap around the bank, uh, I can really put point if there's grass growing there or not and we can just move on. This time of the year, there's not a whole lot of growth because it's been really cold. In the summer, it gets all choked up with grass. But if you can find fresh green grass this time of year, yeah. it can be tasty. I'm gonna take a moment to clean the old screen off here. I was ripping a trap so much yesterday through some dirty water and grass and come dripping off of it that completely just got all my screen dirty. Start out with a trap here. I'm, they probably see quite a few of them, but I'm looking at 55 degree water. That is uh, just trap conditions. Just pumping a crank outside of the reed line. Ooh, I already see some hydrilla. We're gonna be in good shape. See it right there. Right there, that's what we're looking for. Another bait I really wanna try in the grass that I've been fishing deep. I love this bait. It's that Death Stalker. That is a deep water fishing blade bait, but it's basically a lipless crank. When you look at it, it's just metal. It's a good place to flip, you know? If, if the hydrilla was loaded out in this area, outside, it makes it harder to flip because number one, they can get in the grass outside of here. Number two, uh, your bait is just kind of work th working through the holes of the hydrilla. The fish can't see it as good. But on the clean reeds like that, they're going to see it from a ways away and come over there and, and grab that thing. So it just makes your opportunities to catch flipping fish better. There's, a, there's something right there. I don't know what, it's a fish. It is a fish. Okay, oh yeah, there we go. Okay, first fish on with the lipless. It honestly kind of felt like grass. Sometimes they just feel squishy. Come here, buddy. There we go. First fish of the day, the first five minutes. That, uh, that's about a two pounder. That's probably one of the like <laughs> smaller fish I caught. Uh, over the last couple days, but uh, there's some good fish in here too. This point right here should have a fish, got it. <laughs> wow, called that one. Hit it pretty hard. Like a thong. This little guy on the red. 
he wanted the red. These points are always key in the pre-spawn. Little secondary points, stuff like that. That's where they stage up. Something else we'd probably be doing ourselves a disservice if we did not rig up would be a flipping setup with all this shoreline cover. So I've got me a bunch of Kraken Craws here. Uh, of course you guys know I'm loaded up with Bandito Bugs and all that fun stuff. Black and blue is a good choice. I love this natural color. I've, I've just come to love uh, the natural. It just works good just about everywhere. Four aught flipping hook, go in on the hook point side. Uh, if you don't know how to, to do a snail knot, uh, there's tons of internet videos out there that'll show you like really close ups of how to do it. And if you're wondering why the snail, taking the hook point and driving it towards the fish. So a key element to this with all this cover is pegs, which I actually forgot. I forgot my Carl's pegs. These are, this is what used to happen before the invention of the line peg. This long rubber string thing, pull that down and then you cut. Look at this, this is how silly. This used to be the thing though. You take that and you cut that and then that's your peg. A little bit different. We're gonna give it a dang. Just got retied and hooked up on a fish, y'all. And it's on a jerk bait. A little sneaky move that I just made. Sneaky, sneaky move. Oh yeah. Fish crushed it. What do we got going on here? Yeah, a little decent fish. Yeah, I went uh I went full finesse on them after fishing a stretch of bank for about half an hour and not getting a bite. Fish is barely hooked. Oh, biggest fish I've caught so far. Ah, look at that chunk. That is a chunk. Ladies and gentlemen, pre-spawn fish. Jerk bait. Looks like a fat female ready to lay some eggs is what that looks like. Okay, I'll tell you about that in just a second. Let this fish go. That fish should be just a two pounder, but it's getting mighty close to a two and three quarters, three. Beautiful, beautiful grass fish. See ya. I hope that fish is not random. I was getting tired of not catching fish. I was ripping that trap. I was doing flipping. I was flipping a lot too. Wasn't catching anything. I was like, I gotta make a switch here. Maybe go to some finesse tactics. Maybe throw like a uh, weightless stick bait or something like that. I had a little juice milk, get my protein for the day. And I sat down and I got out a jerk bait rod. That's got a, a small jerk bait on it. Kind of stocky, kind of short, finesse jerk baiting. Casting in the same areas and then just jerk, 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 pause. These fish are being finicky now. I think the, the morning bite after I caught a couple, it's worn off. I'm gonna have to get more finesse tactics. And my hope is this afternoon, it's supposed to be like 80 degrees and the fish are gonna push up shallow and the, there's gonna be a better bite this afternoon. So right now, I'm just grinding and trying to think, what are these fish gonna be doing in the interim? That's a fancy word for in the meantime. Check this out. There's three fish sitting on that hydrilla bed. Randomly out here. I've marked it on my GPS. I'm gonna go back with it and just try to like jig up and down on it or something. Just using the side imaging, I found that. So I'm gonna go back over it and see if I can get on it. <clears throat> just threw my blade out here and we'll see if I can feel it. I'm on top of it vertically. Got him. Oh, it came off. It came off. Just right here, you can see my bait. So that's how far I'm lifting it off the bottom there. <sighs> Got him, finally hooked up on him. Nice fish, there we go. Come here, baby. Ah, check that out, guys. Never done this technique before. <laughs> Barely got him in the nose. That is pretty cool. I can honestly say that 
That fish right there, I saw on the electronics. I dropped the blade down, one hit it before I missed him. And then I just kept like working it, just bouncing it up off the grass and he grabbed it. So never done this technique. This is crazy. So I'm letting it go down in this grass a little bit. Oh, got him, got him. That's a good fish too, big one. He hit it on the drop. That's a much better fish. I thought you could just tell the way you hit it. Yeah, oh yeah, it's a good one. So that's two fish off of this thing. Look at that, guys. Look at that. That's, that's amazing. That is amazing. Come here, come here. Look at that, absolutely choked it. Whew, that fish needs to eat, but look at that sucker. Absolute hosiery, y'all. Oh my gosh. Off that bed, grass bed, amazing. The death stalker. Let's see if we can get another one on this death stalker. This is fun. Fishing this super concentrated. This thing is probably about I don't know, half the size of the boat. It's a grass patch. Go all the way down to this grass bed, just till it, it hits, hits the top of it, it kind of gets stuck. And then I'm just ripping it up about a foot or two. And it's a surprise, like the bass are, they're in and around that grass and they see a, a shad just pop out of the grass real quick, looks injured. There's one, got it. Nope, that's grass. <laughs> Felt soggy. Well, two out of three fish isn't bad. I could always come back to this one, but I know there's more clumps out here. I wanna go check them and see if there's more fish uh, that I can catch on this blade paint. This is a really fun technique. I'm super excited like a kid because I've never done it before. Another grass area, a little deep spot. Seems like 22 to 24 feet is where they wanna be. But it is tough. I am not getting them inside of the vessel. This is my life right now, y'all. Upgraded my food to uh, chicken salad right here. Nutrition facts on that guy, probably not OSG approved. And then I take my little, my little spoon and I eat it and then I put it back in the wrapper. I've got me a little milkshake in there. A couple of ice cubes. And that's been my terror life. I would consider it an awesome day if I can get a few more of these grass dwellers out deep because nobody's doing it. Out here, I feel like I could catch a freaking fat female rate of pop. Y'all ever just pack it up and leave the lake and then go to another lake? That's what we're doing right now. I was getting kind of tired over there and this is kind of a pre-fishing day and I want to go check out other places so I find myself at another lake about 40 minutes away. We're going to unstrap the silver bullet, get it all ready to go again and give it a dangle this afternoon. We'll see which one is best. I've already caught five fish today. One a little over three pounds, pretty nice fish, but I want to see what this lake has to offer. So whichever one fishes better, we're going to be going out to it tomorrow with uh, one of the Make-A-Wish candidates that wanted to meet me for some weird reason. I don't know. You guys are awesome though. I, I love you. There's a lot of you out there that want to go fishing with me. I, I'm not the best fisherman, but I guarantee we're going to have a good time. and gentlemen <laughs> a whole nother round of fishing has been done boy you want to talk about just going through techniques today had to break out the slim shake 
finesse tactic. Little guy, little guy, little guy. I think that's what's living down there. This green pumpkin pearl color. Love it. But I put that on a 3 aught offset worm hook. Some 12 pound fluorocarbon leader. And then I'm throwing that with a 3 16 ounce weight Carolina rig style. Finesse Carolina rig. It's a good pre-spawn tactic. It's not something I like to do. It's not a fun technique at all. But I just wanted to catch some fish out here. And it, it's so tough. Tougher than corn cobs. Got us some fishing freaks paddling out to enjoy the day. Die, friends. Put it on the trailer. Came here, I caught my one, and I'm done. One and done. I've had three bites, and the other ones, they felt small. And that's all I needed to know. I had to know between those two lakes which one to go to. This one's been good for me in the past. You guys don't know how many YouTube videos I've done on this one, but I haven't been here in a while, and I don't think it's been good for a while. So, which one would you rather fish? Where you catch five decent fish, one over three pounds, or one dink? I got myself a total of six basses today. I had to really focus right there to get that. On a variety of techniques, it was almost like I picked up one thing and I was like, oh, this is gonna be the jam. I'll just keep going and I'll do it for another 30 minutes to an hour, wouldn't get a bite. And then I pick up another thing, boom, start getting them on that. I'm like, all right, now this is the deal. I'm gonna get them all on that. Jerk bait. I thought the jerk bait was gonna be the juice. First cast, wa-bam. Got smoked. The lipless crankbait. A timeless classic. I'm not gonna pick it up because it's all up in the carpet right now. But I got a couple of fish on that. I was like, oh, keep doing this. Standard pattern. Then a totally different pattern that I've never done before. Marking those grass beds out deep and using whew, this guy right here, the Death Stalker. This is uh, one of the baits that I would say is a must have for winter fishing. If you're gonna do winter fishing, uh, anywhere, anywhere. You can reel this thing in, you can fish it on the bottom, like bounce it up and down. I found it to be probably the best white bass lure that I've ever used in cold water. And the bass like it too. It just looks like a shad. I'll have that puppy linked down below because you can only get it at Carl's. Where else would you know to get it if I didn't leave a link? And that is all I have for you today, y'all. Go give that little deep grass bed thing a try if you've got some grass beds around your lake. And if you want to follow the adventures, Tomorrow is going to be a very special day taking a special young man out. Subscribe right here to the channel and I love you guys. Thank you for all of your support. I will see you right here on the next day.